Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another video. So today's video is somehow a coaching video where you guys send me your own gameplay, and I try to criticize your decisions, give you some tips and tricks in the gameplay where need be. Like, if there is somewhere to improve your approach to some scenarios that happen to all of us in a game, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks for that, and this is how today's video works. So if you guys also want to be a participant in these kind of videos, you can send me your gameplays according to the steps that are in the video description. So make sure to check that out if you're interested, and make sure to also like this video and subscribe to the channel because it only takes one click and you won't be missing on the future videos. Also, shout out to Sunslayer. They're the first person who actually sent me their gameplay video and it's like a kickstarter for this series of videos so let me just skip to where he starts shooting people probably around here so he's using the ak5c with the wrapped suppressor so that's the first skill and that's the second there's something i want to tell you here uh if you see someone about to get on a zip line you just let him get on it first and then start shooting them. Because that way it's going to be very easier for you to hit that target while that target is actually on the zipline. Because it's a straight line. The speed is actually fixed in a static rate. And that's going to make it easier for you. As you can see, that second kill was just a bit harder to get. That's a good one. Ah, oh, that was a rat. Most of the times when I place discarded and I kind of want to go through these doors, I just try to get in there just completely jumping. Like, I don't, like, straight up move in there. And that's going to make things a bit harder for rats like that one. And if you had done that, uh, he would have had a pretty harder time hitting you. So you were just an easy target for him. Okay, that was a fair death. I do believe you just... Couldn't win the gunfight. Maybe the fact that your enemy went prone had some impact on the result of that gunfight, but it just happens to all of us. Somewhat, sometimes we just lose a gunfight. There's just nothing to worry about. Most of the times when people actually lose gunfights, they think there's something wrong with them. In most scenarios, there is actually something's wrong with you, but there's also something to learn in every failure. So every single time that you kind of lose in a gunfight, the best you can do is just be okay with yourself and like kind of process what caused you to be the failure of that gunfight and generally speaking i don't really recommend having suppressors on assault rifles for smgs i just love having smgs with uh, suppressors because smgs are meant to give you some cqb right that's not the case for assault rifles most of the times you get into gunfights in medium range with ARs and that muzzle velocity that wrapped suppressor takes away is actually very important when it comes to gunfights in longer ranges. All right, so there is another one back there. If I were you, I would just go for him faster. You see, he just, he just got his HP back up again. So you could just push him sooner. As soon as you uh, depleted his HP, you could just push him, and that would be the end of story. There's someone coming down. He dies. That was a good one. Also, the AK-5C is a very, very strong weapon. It really is. Especially in range. It's going to be very strong, and that's why I just don't like having that wrapped suppressor on it. If you want to be just completely stealthy, you can use the Type 4 Heavy Suppressor with subsonic rounds. That way, you're just completely stealthy. But AK-5C is amazingly good in medium break even in long ranges, so you're just going to need that muzzle velocity. Okay, going up, the, going up the zip line. Okay, first skill. Someone went down. Okay, so that's one of the mistakes that people tend to make. You completely turned against the people that you knew were there. And you really got lucky to get out of there alive, to be honest. If that was a more experienced player against you, that player would probably just push you and kill you before you jump down. So that's something to always consider. Don't really run away from gunfights that early. If you really think that the enemy is kind of flanking you, that's fine. You can just run away for it. That was too early. You got lucky just a bit. One thing I noticed about uh, the, his gameplay is that Sunslayer really doesn't really want to participate in capturing objectives. And that's really a very important part of winning in a conquest match. The level of your skills is the kind of level that you can use to capture objectives because you're getting kills. Obviously, that's a good sign. But capturing objectives is 
also important. Maybe even more important than getting kills in a conquest match. That was just a bad time to reload in my opinion. Let me go back to see how many ammo you had there. 29. So you literally had like 29 bullets in that mag that you just went for the reload for. And that's something that really hurts the experience a lot in, sh in any shooting game. It doesn't really matter if it's Battlefield, COD, whatever, even Rainbow Six Siege. The bad timing for reloading is really one of the things that haunts people in shooting games. And you really need to work on that to get used to a pattern that doesn't really compel you to reload every single time that you get into a gunfight and that gunfight is over because there are sometimes multiple gunfights in a very short amount of time so you guys better remember to always reload when need be that is something very important and it will really save your life in a lot of scenarios okay we're taking down a tank with the armor piercing grenade launcher the armor piercing grenade launcher is a very important part of ak5c and all the weapons that actually support that attachment because it really is a strong companion to have against enemy armor now you guys need c2 if i were you i would just use the step line and get myself as fast as possible to the objective you know that's literally the best thing you can do and you didn't really need this zip line to get there like the one in the ship would be enough to get you here okay that's a good one and there's something about your aim you i feel like you're aim kind of goes left and right like you add some horizontal recoil to the weapon yourself that's kind of my feeling maybe i'm wrong but from from what i'm seeing so far when people are hit glitched you kind of give a bit of horizontal recoil to your own aim that's something that happens even i was dealing with this issue uh like a year ago and the reason for that in my opinion is just uh, focusing too much on the enemy on how you shoot on getting kills that's really sometimes a big issue maybe because you're recording maybe you're not used to recording your gameplay because people sometimes when they record their gameplay it's kind of hard for them especially if they're not used to it uh i was dealing with this issue back then when i was starting the channel but yeah try to be always in the present time don't really overthink that aiming mechanism just try to shoot your enemy as uh practically as possible things should be good to go okay so sun slayer is now actually ca coming here all along to capture an objective so d is the enemy's base objective in my opinion coming here alone uh isn't really going to do much especially if there is a like responsible team against you it's not going to really work as good as you might think however this time it did and as you can see there are uh not much players coming to defend so far, there are two people here, one in the objective, one outside. I wouldn't stay here if I were you, because they already know you're here, and they'd start searching. As you can see, they came for you, and they got the kill. Because that dude actually knew where you are, he came pre-aimed, and you are just in a disadvantage. So every single time that you shoot at someone, that person sees you completely, detects where you are. You better change that position as soon as possible, because that's gonna just make it harder for the enemy to come and shoot you down. I know this part of the objective feels safe, but you should try to uh, just move more a bit in the sights. These people will probably spawn and they know exactly where you are. If I were you, I would just get out of here. There are better places you can be, really. You can be in C sector. C is very important in this map and it is very important. It literally dictates the balance of the match. So if I were you, I would just retreat to C sector, especially if you can't do anything about against that enemy armor. I would just retreat. So yeah, the match is now complete. As you can see, 34-8. That's some, some good KD right there. But again, as you can see, the person below you has 536 points. Whereas you have about 600. He's got that point with 11 kills less than you. So he could easily be above you with just a few more kills. Your points are not that much because you didn't really participate in capturing sites that much especially when you were playing around c uh, which was the bigger portion of this whole gameplay being around c and not really uh participating in capturing those objectives can actually be very tough on your team especially if you are a good player of course you are a good player because you're the first fragger here and if you are a good player and you avoid capturing those objectives your team's gonna pay for that in this scenario your team actually was just better 
than the enemy team. But if there is some kind of a balance there, it's going to be very hard for you to win a game in discarded conquest where you actually don't play the objectives C1 and C2. So always keep that in mind. In my opinion, you are a very conservative player and you try to avoid risks as much as possible. In my opinion, sometimes in shooting games, when people take risks, they get a bigger reward for that. And that's something that you should all often do. Like going into that D1 objective alone was a risk, in my opinion, not worth taking because D1 was the enemy's objective and it was close to their base. So there are snipers there, as, as you probably know, back in their base on the cranes there are snipers people can really come for you easier the vehicles have less way to uh, drive to you and get themselves to you as you can see in the final part of this gameplay there was a enemy vehicle coming there and uh, that's not going to be really cool fortunately for you your team actually arrived there and they started supporting you but in my opinion don't ever go to enemy objectives alone let alone that enemy objective is their base objective. So don't really do that. Instead of that, try to help your team in objectives that your team are active. For example, again, C sector was a perfect place for you. You could just go there, completely clear C sector, and then decide to go whether B or D. And in my opinion, you just need to work on that shaking hand when you shoot. Try to do that because that is really going to help you a lot in gunfights. I know sometimes you record gameplay. It's hard for you to play record while recording. That's something that goes on your subconscious mind and messes with you most of the times. That's something you need to get used to, especially if you record a lot. But if you're not just recording and you've precisely just recorded for this specific video, uh, then that's all right. I do understand understand that feeling I do get it and that's fine that's all right so that that was all the things that I needed to point out I hope Sunslayer actually finds it uh, refreshing and finds it helpful because I gave them as much as I could uh, and generally speaking you are a good player and that's why I really didn't like you to just wander around not capturing those objectives and I hope you just don't mind my criticizing there so thank you all guys for watching hope you enjoyed the video this video actually can benefit a lot of new players in Battlefield 2042 because there are some basic stuff that we really talk about there are tips that i give you that most of the times that will help you especially with the zip line those tips are really something that come from experience and you just need to play hours and hours and hours to kind of get to the point where there are things that you just know by default that zip line thing in the beginning of the video was one of those default things so not only for sunslayer themselves but uh, for you guys who are watching this video can really be helpful and i hope i could deliver until next time guys stay cool